Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice-monthly talk show episodes, virtual stitching, celebrity interviews, podcasts, and more. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by QT Fabrics, and we still have these cute... Wait, you switched them. I did. I, had... I got the big one. Anyway. I had the... <laughs> Did you lose? <laughs> we have these really cute <laughs> pop-up bins um, that they sent us, and it's made out of the stitch ombre fabric. Ombre stitches. Ombre stitches. Um, <laughs> and the pattern, which we didn't talk about on the last episode, oh, is from pattern. Fat Quarter Gypsy. Ooh, yeah. And it's got the springy things inside. Which springy the, things. The first time I made one. Known as thingies. I did not exactly follow the directions. Ah. Oh. What? It ended okay eventually. There may have been a lot of cursing and sweating before then. So I'm just saying, if, if you purchase the kit, please read the directions and follow them. It's not exactly intuitive. You're like, I got this. No, you don't. You're not. <laughs> I think that, uh, <laughs> I just, well, and we write patterns, so I shouldn't say this, but, you know, patterns are like, you know, when you buy things, you're supposed to put them together. Like, that's just reference material for the future. That's also why she hates Ikea. Because I just put stuff together, and then if something goes wrong, that's when you get out the manual. You don't do it, like, while you're putting it together. No, you defeats, do it before. That defeats the whole purpose. The whole purpose. You get it, and then it's like a puzzle. It's like looking at the picture of a puzzle box. You don't look at the picture. You just put the puzzle together. Everyone else hear this crazy coming out of your face? Bananas. I'm telling you, that's how you do it. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about pricing quilts for sale and man quilts. We're joined by Pam's quilt, Ted. 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 His name is Ted. There you go. Do you know why his name is Ted? No. I don't know why his name is Ted. Do you want to know why his name is Ted? I'm scared to ask, honestly. Oh, it's a fun story. Okay, so I, no, tell me why his name's Ted. So this uh, is a quilt I made my husband several years ago. It was actually the inspiration for our pattern, Belinda. I started to say, it looks similar to Belinda. It is. So it's made from a layer cake. Actually, this one's more than one layer cake of 19, circa 1939 uh, from Sweetwater. I like no, it. not from Sweetwater. From someone who's... who's I know it is... Uh, I will look it up and we will put that in the show notes. <laughs> Sorry. I'm she a had a Martha Pullen moment. Yay. I got nothing. Anyway, layer cake. Yes. Giant hexes. When you trim the layer cake to make the hexes, you have all these little bits left over, like one and a half inch strips and yes. various other triangle things. And so I started calling those buffalo bits because in ye olden days, ye, ye olden would, days, ye, ye would kill a buffalo yeah. and need to use every part of it. And so I used every stinking piece from the layer cake to make the piece to border. Which is super and cute. Do you know who has a lot of buffalo now? Ted. Ted Turner. Turner. <laughs> he also has a restaurant chain, which I have dinner at frequently. Yes. It's very tasty. So anyway, I named this. And quilt. you can eat buffalo there. It's true. Just saying. It's good. Sure it is. I like the quilt better. The quilt <laughs> is super cool. So I, uh, and I named it Ted. My husband does not care. <laughs> He's like, whatever, give me Ted. <laughs> I don't care what it's named. So there you go. There you go. Cosmo Cricket is the designer. Thank you, production staff. 1934. <laughs> That's cool. I'm glad we have production staff. Yeah. Would have been helpful if they don't totally in, in Martha Pullman on that episode. Anyway, but nobody knew what I was talking about. Not the about. target mark. No, I knew what you talked about. And then I took a picture. Of that I know. I saw I was, that. I was like, hey, she's see, like, me look. Now. Here's the Martha Bull. And people looked at me weird, like, why are you taking a picture of that? <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's our thing. We get it. So, Lynn, yes. what you been up to lately? I, yes. I have been up to um, the reason I didn't get to go to the Sewing and Quilt Expo was because I got to attend the Best Buddies Gala in Nashville, which was a fundraiser for um, Best Buddies. 
which is the charity organization that um, pairs special needs children and adults with, and they do a variety of things, work programs, helping finding adults um, jobs, giving them interview skills, also pairing kids with special needs to a typical child um, in their grade so that they have a peer group. It's just a wonderful organization. And my sister's involved in it, and she was actually the chair of the committee, and I got to go to the gala, and it was fancy. It was very fancy. We had to wear didn't, cocktail dresses and everything. Didn't actually see a picture of your dress. I noticed that part was cropped out in the photo that you posted. I, um, it's because I haven't posted the picture with the big old hockey star and myself. So I got to meet, Ooh. I know, <laughs> like I got to meet Roman Yossi and I have discovered, well, so let me finish this and I'll tell you the other part. So I got to meet Mr. Yossi, extremely nice person. And he, uh, he, he, rode in a limousine from wherever they picked him up and he brought a, a special needs person got to ride in limousine with him and come to the gala with him which was really neat um they were very pleased so when he got there he knows my sister and so he immediately asked where my niece was and angie asked him to sign the quilt so he actually signed the quilt and he um, he was like, this is really cool. He really liked it. He goes, I'm going to take a picture of this. So he backed up and took a picture of the quilt. And um, he was like, how did you? Ma-? He goes, you made this? And he was very impressed with it and thought it was really neat. I was like, well, it's of you. <laughs> and I showed him where all his teammates' names were quilted on it. And he Correctly was, spelled. Yes, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, I said, well, I said, it's your current roster because I didn't put the players' names on it until after the trade deadline. So it's the real team who's going to go into the playoffs because they can't trade anymore. So I included two, like Mike Fisher was one of the players who came back out of retirement. His name's on there. And then Scott Hartman was one of the trade deadline people that they got so and I showed him where all that was he really liked it and found out later he actually bid on it like and the only reason I know that is because my sister had access to all the bids they had over 400 items up for sale all these signed guitars all these sports memorabilia mostly Nashville stuff but well the signed guitars I mean yeah um and so the quilt sold for $2,250, which we were excited about. Yay. Um, and I have it on good authority, because this will come out after it happens, that it's actually being given to Roman. Oh. So he will own it, which is really neat. He couldn't um, stay till the bidding ended <laughs> because they have curfew. So all the hockey players had to go home before the night was over. So he couldn't. And plus, honestly, he, the guy was busy. I mean, they auctioned off um, all kinds of stuff, like a, a lunch with him and going to a practice. And the uh, the goalie for the Nashville Predators was there was Peke Rene. And I met him and talked to him. And I met a bunch of people that I don't know, and they would come up to the quilt, and they'd talk to me about this quilt. Well, this one guy, I know who you are now, came up and talked to me for like 10 minutes about the quilt. It was a nice guy, young guy, and I was like, and he was just interested in the quilt itself, and I gave him details. Of, and he walked away, and I was like, oh, it's, you know, and he was like, oh, this is really cool. He really liked it. was totally interested in it. Walked away later because other people were coming up and talking about it and stuff. It was a hit. Everybody loved it. And uh, later, I see that guy leave with Mike Fisher. And Mike Fisher is one of the big Predator hockey players. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That was, that was Turris. That was Ryan Turris. Wait, Kyle Turris. See, I, I'm bad. It was Sports. Kyle Turris. <laughs> who's a big hockey player for the team. And I didn't recognize him. I was like, and I, he talked to me for 10 minutes. <laughs> I had no idea. I showed him where his name was on the quilt. Look, there you go. So anyway, 
It was kind of funny. Sports. Sports. So they really liked it. Good. And it was a great, it was a great evening. And they made a ton of money. I forget, 160 thousand from the auction and over, no 160 thousand from the auction and with ticket sales okay. it was over 300 thousand <laughs> yeah a lot of aggressive i'm getting signals over here <laughs> anyway <laughs> um <laughs> sounds like we, that's the different sports thing i all anyway, i know is madonna vogue it was kyle oh my God. <laughs> I got so <that> um <laughs> It was really neat. It was a neat. Of course, I didn't know anybody there. So all of the big players, you know, I mean, as in important business people that were there, I didn't know any of those. But it was a great evening. It was great. Evening. I was so tired at the end of the day. I didn't get back to the house. I because we had to pack everything up. Oh and, yeah. Ugh, take I mean, down two the o'clock worst. in the morning. We got back. We rolled back into the house to go to bed and. Then we had ice skating lessons the next day. So we had to go to the ice skating lesson and watch that. And then um, then we had the hockey game last night, so we went to the game. It was exciting, too. So I got to see, meet all these people who played, and then I got to see them play. So it's kind of fun. And we like my... We Did you yell hockey. out, I know them! I know that guy! I know that guy! <laughs> yes. So anyway. Hooray. Hooray. It was fun. It was totally worth it. I actually gave out a lot of cards. Like, people t- took my information. Like, they'll, I don't know, maybe somebody will want a quilt. I don't know. So, they thought it was cool. A lot of men thought it was cool. So, it's good we have this topic coming up. Men thought the quilt was very cool. Good. All right. So. So. Yes. <laughs> Feel like you're going to ask me a question, Pam? No, I, there was more. I was going to come up with an interesting segue, and then it and fell it out of my head. It didn't it have gone. No, well, so it was more. I have also done quilts for auctions, and oh, and yeah, yeah, and putting the value on it is like Ugh, difficult because that also dictates usually the starting point for the bids and all that stuff. But then also in general, we get I get asked a lot like, "Oh, do you make quilts for other people?" And I happily tell them no. And then someone came back at me last week, like, well, how many quilts do you need in your house? I'm like, at least all one, of them. At least one more than I have now. All of them. <laughs> and people ask me that too, like, what do you do with all your quilts? I'm like, they're in a trunk show. <laughs> they get shown off. It's like there's three on the couch, one on each chair, a basket full next to the recliner. I I well, I use a lot of them for trunk shows. And some of them are wall decorations. So they hanging up at my house. I make a lot of forts. Yes, because you need forts. You need quilt forts. Those are required. Yeah, you do. Exactly. So, yeah, when I, this came about, and, I, and I'm not sure if it, the question was asked because someone is trying to price their work for sale or they're more curious about our perspective, given our experience, and particularly you as an appraiser. And, and I keep thinking back to, you know, the same auction that I make quilts for. Uh, I used to run it, and so I would be in charge. People would donate things, but not have a value assigned to it. And we'd have to Google some things, be like, what is, what is this worth? And so... Yeah. Uh, and we were doing that for this auction. Fun so fact. I, I saw this whole process go down. So someone donated, and I suspect it was himself, uh, a pair of Bill Goldberg's used wrestling gloves that he autographed. <laughs> He's a professional wrestler from this area. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how do we value this? <laughs> like wrestling gloves cost 20 bucks. I don't know. And he signed it with, oh, but now there's also DNA on it because they're used. So like, what is, do we want to clone Bill Goldberg? Do we... <laughs> <laughs> and my husband has experience in professional wrestling. Right. <laughs> and so they're like, well, ask your husband. And I ask him, what? What's the value of these? He's like, they are worth nothing to me. The value is zero, which is an interesting perspective of like, oh, the value is assigned by the buyer. Because if no one was interested in buying your quilt, your quilt had no value to them. True. And that's what that's where you go back to fair market value. Mm -hmm. So what does a knowledgeable buyer and a knowledgeable seller sell this item for? And that's fair market value. Uh, which auctions can be a little dicey in that because not everybody there is a knowledgeable mm-hmm. buyer. 
um, how I would determine that and how I think they did that with the, um, because there were 20 or 30 signed guitars and at least 20 or 30 signed items. So like, you know, a bunch of different predators signed pucks. Well, Roman Yossi's puck is worth more than, you know, Kyle Turris's puck because Kyle's new to the team. He's not been playing in the league as long. He's not the captain. Um, he's a great player. He may be, you know, it may be worth more later. You know, it's mm-hmm. like getting a rookie card and ca- instead of getting the... So what is that puck selling for on secondary markets? You know, how many Roman Yossi pucks are there out there? And are people selling them at that? And the same with signed guitars. The same with quilts. It may not be because it's signed, but you have to look at what is this type of quilt selling for in the fair market Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And that's where we do ourselves a huge disservice because we lowball our price below, you know, what it's worth. And I think I see a lot of quilts being sold online through certain sites. I have very strong opinions about this through certain sites and there's no way they're recovering the material, Mm -hmm. the cost of material. You know, if you're selling a quilt for $50, that's a queen size quilt. You are giving it away. And then you're putting a fair market value out there. That is not useful to me because I have to look at what things are sold for to determine appraisal prices. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with antique, or that's not antique, but antique or vintage quilts. <laughs> it, it was circa early. 1934. <laughs> it was earlier. <laughs> like, it's a show before it was. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so you need to look at material costs. How much is that? Um, and then you need to look at what's the fair market value and the time you put into it. And that's how I would determine, you know, the cost of a quilt. Now, that being said, <sighs> When you're dealing with auctions and you're getting donated to a charity, okay, if the organization sets the price, like you're giving a gift certificate and the gift certificate's worth $50. If the person winning the gift certificate wins it for $20, they don't get a tax deduction. Right. If they win it for $55 $55 and it's worth 50, they get a $5 tax deduction. That's how that works. So it has to be that's your, in the US. That's in the US. It has to be over the the fair market value of the price that's on there. Now, you know, some of those sign guitars and all that kind of stuff, that's yeah, some of that stuff's priceless. I mean, especially when you're dealing with and, and this is not quilts, but you're dealing. He signed the quilt too, which he, they're giving it back to him. So <laughs> I told <laughs> my sister's in charge of giving it back to him. I told her, I said, be sure and tell him it's signed. <laughs> I signed it too. So just so you know, <laughs> be sure and tell him it's signed. So I, t- I want to know what it says to that because he hasn't gotten it yet, at least yeah. when we're taping this. So, in my experience of running, an auction, smaller scale than what you were just at, yeah. That you had donated yours to. We saw the average, like the winning bid on the items on average compared to the stated value, 55%. So most things, oh. at least for ours, there's like a couple big ticket items at the live auction that maybe went for more. But right. most of the things go for under stated value. Oh, there was a signed guitar that went for $11,000. Yeah. Yeah, I was like... Seriously. And, the, and then they had one signed guitar that was all of the Predators. Predators are huge in Nashville right now, so it's very popular. They're a very popular, you know, draw. Um, but they signed a Predators guitar with Western Conference champions on it, and all the Predators signed it. So you had, it was worth more than just one celebrity signature kind of thing. But... The program that they use, at least where I was just at, they use this uh, program with automatic bidding, which was really kind of cool. So they load all the stuff and all the items in the computer, and the computer, 
they put in the value that they're going to start with and the computer suggests the starting bid price, which is about 20% mm -hmm. of the value. So, you know, if it's $1,000, it's going to be a starting price of 200 all right, so well, let's talk about this quote because it's mine and I don't care and it's not for sale. So if we look at Garrett will hurt you if you took it from him. You probably wouldn't notice. There's a bunch of other quotes <laughs> in the house. I'm just saying I snuck this out and he didn't ask a single thing. <laughs> like, where are you going with that quilt? Whatever. How I roll. I took it to Texas last week. Ah! <laughs> so two layer cakes. Yes. About a yard and a half of solid plus some backing. So two layer cakes in the U.S. they go for about forty dollars, forty bucks a piece. So eighty that's bucks. Eighty. Yard and a half a solid goes for seven bucks a piece. Fourteen. Fourteen. We'll round up because of math. So we're at ninety four. Package of batting twenty bucks. Got a coupon. <laughs> Don't consider that. Just saying. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. So now we're at one fourteen. Mm hmm. Okay. Backing fabric. There's a bunch of la leftover layer cake squares on the back, but let's just say that I bought four yards of batting or backing. Right. So forty-eight. Uh, twelve dollars a yard. Well, I didn't go with fancy fabric. Yeah, but that's well, I understand that. But if I went to buy fabric today, that's the cost of it's twelve dollars a yard is the cost of unless you used a solid or you used a batik because if you use batik, it's more. If you use hand dyed, it's more. If it's just a plain print, twelve dollars a yard. Okay. So forty-eight. So forty-eight plus one fourteen is. We really should have done some math ahead of time. Just saying. <laughs> forty-eight <laughs> plus one fourteen. Uh, one sixty-two. One sixty-two. One sixty-two. And that didn't uh, plus one. It's one eighty-two now because we got the the batting. One eighty-two, plus you've got a yard for binding. Not that big, like happy yard, but sure. Okay, so six dollars more, so one eighty eight. So let's just call it two hundred in material because there's thread and stuff in there. Right. Okay. Two hundred in materials. Right. And how long did I spend making this? Yes, but you don't. Well, yeah. See. Okay. So <laughs> here we go. Here we Everybody go. Everybody, grab a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Gonna need to refresh. <laughs> okay. If you're donating it, you can only, I think we talked about this before, you can only take, as a charitable deduction, right. cost of materials. Yeah, but I'm not. Let's say I want to sell this online. Hey, everyone, I've got a quilt for sale. Well, then how much is it, how much do you cost hourly to create this? How long does it take you to create this? 20 hours? It's definitely at least two weekends worth. 20 hours is fair? Sure. 20 okay. bucks an hour? 20 bucks an hour. Although, well, maybe I was $15 an hour at the point I made this. <laughs> She's worth more now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 20, 300 bucks. So 300 bucks. So we're looking at a $500 quilt. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I, I mean, fair market value probably, yeah. Because it's not, like, you're not talking about applique. You're not talking about nope. heavy quilting. You're talking about... And all over meander, some straight line work on the outside. It's not, it's it's moderately quilted. It's not heavy quilted. It's not simple. It's machine bound, FYI. Machine bound. Okay. So How I roll. Yeah. <laughs> um, and people charge by this linear inch for binding. So you have to kind of look at that. So $500, $550 to $600 for that quilt. Yeah, that's probably fair. It's a lap size quilt. It's not And that's huge. not making a profit. That's just like what it. Would have cost me right to be commissioned to make that. Yeah, yeah. Well, your profit you is your profit is really your time. That's true. That's your profit. Yeah. The cost of materials is not. So you gotcha. made profit wise. You made three hundred bucks. Yeah. The imaginary buyer to the imaginary buyer. Oh, send my husband a bill. So, <laughs> but sending a quilt <laughs> to an auction. No, I've seen quilts go, and again, it's educated buyers at the auction. Auctions can go really high or they can go really low. It just depends <laughs> yes, on who's there. Because I've seen quilts that I don't think are that spectacular, but you get in front of the right people. It's just, you know, that really want it and like, that are drunk enough. Just saying. 
which is why you get free drinks at an auction, by it the way. It is. It is. They, they, um, they, liquor was uh, will flowing say, freely at the uh, event. I was just one at. of the last auctions I went to, one of the more popular items was that the, the hoodie, like the sweatshirt. Yeah. With the built in pocket to put your cat in. <laughs> well, it's like a little yeah. kangaroo. Yes, but let's clarify you were at a fundraiser for. Good Muse, which is the cat shelter. So that would also, be... Also, that is just the people I hang out with, Lynn. We <laughs> are all like, I need that shirt to put my cat in. So, right. Yes. So that may not have gone as high at the Probably one not at Best I was Buddies. just at. No. Right, exactly. So you've got to know your audience. you got to have the pocket kitten market. Yeah. That's why the Roman Yossi quilt went well at a fundraiser where he was at. Yeah. You know, because you bring it to Good Muse, they're like, who's that guy? My cat's just going to shred all that. <laughs> it wouldn't go well. So, right. It would be great under the litter box. <laughs> I, you have to look at fair market value. You have to look at time materials and the market that you're selling it to. And, you know, 20% of what the fair market value is is kind of where a lot of auctions start. Let me raise Mine this was question. an art quilt, though. So you're talking totally different. True. Yeah. So speaking of art quilts, when it comes to valuing for artistic quality, then one would say, okay, that we should be presenting our quilts in artist markets for sale and not craft markets. However, I do have a good friend who says he will stop going. He does not sell any of his work. He's an artist. He won't sell any of his work at a venue that sells food. There you go. Because, because he doesn't make as much money. And that's the difference between an artist market and a craft market. And But also knowing that at an art market, they don't consider making blankets to be a form of art. Um, well, uh, you know, at the craft market that will be here in a couple weeks, they do have quilters there. Um, they're what you're talking about. <laughs> the, it's the it's a really big. I've been going to it since we moved to Atlanta. Oh, Twenty the one in years. Downtown? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's the craft market, and I forget the name of it. We'll have to look it American up. Craft. American Craft Council. Thank you. And um, they actually have quilters there. I've seen quilts there. Okay. Not a ton. You have to jur- get juried in. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely a. You know, you have to have a skill set to get in there. And the stuff that sells there is definitely not Grandmother's Flower Garden or mm-hmm. it's, it's original work yeah. kind of thing. That, because the people who attend that craft, American Craft Council show are buyers that are looking for the unique. They're looking for the one of the kind. They're looking for, you know, something you can't get at Walmart or Macy's or, you know, yep. and that's the difference, you know, than selling at your local farmer's market where you set a booth up for $5, <laughs> you know. And not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just you're going to get <laughs> And a you different... get your funnel cake next door. <laughs> and you get your funnel cake next door. It's not that there's anything wrong with that. If you want to sell your stuff there, go for it. Have a great time. Just it's a different it's a different buyer that comes mm. to that. And, yeah, I, I do have a friend. He said, <laughs> he said, I won't sell my work. Because his work's very high-end, too. So that's kind of, and it's gorgeous it's stuff. So, anyway. So, we are going to take a closer look at Ted. And Ted. we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are now going to talk about a viewer suggested topic. Thank you very much. And it will be man quilts. Man quilts. Man quilts. So it's a pound of food. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a callback to King of Queens, I think. There's a hungry man dinner. Like maybe I want to eat a pound of food and I'm a lady. Gosh darn it. That's what it made me think of. A pound of food. Man quilts. Man quilts. So, 
do you think so when the you specific, make a the specific question was okay could you talk about making more quilts for men because a lot of their designs and fabric choices out now are have some more feminine qualities which i find an an interesting topic to tackle a given that like RuPaul's Drag Race on right now, girlfriend. I am invested. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we are now in an age where things are a lot more gender fluid. And when I think man quilts, I'm like, oh, because it's blue? Oh, I like blue. Uh, is it because it's got... You like blue? Man stuff? I like, I, what makes it... I guess I struggle with what makes it a man quilt compared to what makes it a quilt like to me they're quilts yeah they're quilts i don't, I don't well okay so when this topic when i looked at this topic i i have just made a man quilt <laughs> it's not what i heard i heard maybe it wasn't quite done yet because if it was done it'd be hanging behind us <laughs> okay that's a different one that was um, dr reinhardt to the burn unit <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. So, off camera, <laughs> just explain. Off camera, I had made a quilt for my husband, and I gave him the top, but I haven't quilted it yet. And so, when he's hanging up the quilt behind us, he made the comment that this would be a perfect episode to hang up my quilt that <laughs> I haven't quilted yet. So, anyway, it'll be a while, honey. Sorry. <laughs> um, I've got other quilts that have to be done before yours. I should probably anyway. add that to a spreadsheet that might bump up the chances of it getting done. True. Pam <laughs> gives me a spreadsheet that has nothing to do with your quilt. Anyway, as he sits right here, just FYI, <laughs> grimacy. Um, when I read the topic, though, I, considering I just finished a man quilt, which I think the Roman Yossi quilt was a man quilt. It's got a uh, legit man on it. <laughs> legit man on it. Yeah, exactly. And standing in front of it for the few hours that I did, whatever night it was, um, it's kind of blurry because we were there for, for 15, 18 hours. I don't know. Um, men were fascinated by it. More men walked up to it and were fascinated by it than women. Because of the materials, because of it was interesting and new and their brains couldn't reconcile what that was because of the topic or topic. Like what, I, yeah, I would see. say the interest in the topic that it was something that they could see putting in their man cave that they could see putting in their office we talk about my lady cave but this ain't that kind of show <laughs> You're welcome, Brent. I know you love it when I say stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I think that quilt was appealing to men who like hockey, play hockey, interested in hockey, which I will tell you is more of a man sport than a female sport. And I know this because it is the only time in my life we went to the All-Stars game, hockey All-Stars game, when it was in Atlanta 10 years ago on my birthday. And it's the only time in my life I've ever been to a sporting event where the men were waiting for 30 minutes to go to the bathroom. And I walked in with no problem. And men were asking me if they could come in. I was like, no, this is total payback. You stand in line. It was at the, the hockey all-star game. I was like, it was great. It was a moment of victory. Victory. Because <laughs> I walked in and walked out, and the same guy was standing there. And I didn't feel bad for him at all. I had no, no qualms. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> let's put a pin in that. <laughs> let's put that in the parking lot. No, but I will. But I find it interesting because hockey is one of the sports that I enjoy watching because it's not boring. <laughs> That's my problem with most sports. Like a whole lot of downtime, there's nothing happening. Oh, there's stuff happening in hockey all the time. I, and then there's a good fight will bust out. Yes, That's there was a, one the you see other the, night. See the it's blood got very bounce chippy. off the plexi. Great. And then we got a penalty for their guy tripping. It was bad. And we yelled at the ref. It was a great night. Yeah, the hockey arena. Okay, so. Topic interest. <laughs> Topic interest, I think. To me, that's going to attract men. 
And and yes, we're stereotyping. I'm totally stereotyping. But I, but there are things that men, hasty generalization, are interested in over women. You know, I think. Um, but to me, it's more about making a quilt to the person's interest, regardless of what right. body parts they have. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, you like snacks. I like snacks too. Don't put a pickle on it. I hate pickles. Pickles are gross. You love pickles? Put pickles on your quilt. I want Reese's peanut butter cups on mine. Hey, it's on that snack quilt. Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cups. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I agree. I'm just from my experience the other night, more men right. walked up to this hockey quilt than women did. Although women were as fascinated by it too. There was just a higher percentage. So if you were making a quilt my... for a woman, do you feel as hamstrung by her preferences as you would in making one for a man? No, I think when I'm making a quilt for a man, I do I do want to know maybe his interests. And I'm like making quilts that kind of go more towards his interests if I find a focus. I mean, I'm not putting big old roses on it or something. Unless the guy's florist and then yes, I'll put roses on it. You know, so it would have been a great quilt for my grandfather. He was a florist. He would have liked a rose quilt. So I could have done railroads and cake. There you go. <laughs> I but I, I don't know that that makes it a man quilt. I mean, yeah. I, interior decorators will tell you that the most popular quilt colors throughout history, and historians will tell you this too. Most popular quilt color combination throughout history is blue and white. So, and those, we are still decorating bedrooms with blue and white. We're still decorating with blue and white in our homes. So, does blue and white make it gender specific? I don't know. We didn't start signing gender specific, like pink or blue, to kids until the 1950s. Like, I think it was after World War II you started seeing that. And, and it was a marketing technique. And culturally, it's different. That's American or Western civilization. Um, you know, and now we've got all these gender reveals where it's blue or pink or, you know, so. Well, they have to hold, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, which eat is a cupcake and mind. get yeah. pink icing or blue icing. or I, Yeah. They have parties and stuff and everything. Uh, with our first, my husband didn't want to know. I had a feeling. And I was right. <laughs> you knew but we like until he came out of the shoot we didn't know what we were getting like we're getting a baby <laughs> we're getting a baby despite all of my pregnancy dreams that i was having kittens <laughs> it came so, out human uh, for Congrats. me color i mean if they like red make a red quilt if they might you know i i don't know i think it's to the person not to yeah. the gender yes i agree with that completely agree with that now are there but are there gender specific shapes like hexagons nope no, nope. because I think case in point, this is a little more masculine in terms of color selection. The quilt on the cover of the Belinda pattern is a lot more feminine. It's a light it's blue the and fabric, orange and, and birds and yeah, it's the fabric butterflies. Changes. That's what I love about fabric, though. I mean, you can make the same quilt pattern five different ways and have five different looking quilts. You know, and you can go from. Reproduction 1800s to 1930s to very modern, all solids to, you know, watercolor kind of colors to whatever. Text prints, which I like the text prints in there. I love a good text print. I'm a sucker for a good text print. And you know what I find myself? I'm attracted to, like one year I'll be like, I'm all about this color. And the next year I'm like, I don't know. I'm still all about orange. That never changes. Just saying. Hmm. But, you know, some days I like teal and some days teal's okay. Hmm. By the way, good. Modern yes. Quilt Studio, Bill Karen Weeks Ringle, just posted on Who Facebook that their favorite, the, <laughs> the Instagram, the IG Quilt Fest, Instagram Quilt Fest, that That's their funny. favorite neutral is teal. And they called it a neutral, which I got in trouble with on our episode. I know, but I'm going to let them I'm do it. I'm going to let them do it. Yes. And let it go. I did. Got in trouble. Because you were wrong. How was I wrong? I got in trouble a, from you. You didn't have a lot of pretty pictures like they did. It's all about the presentation <laughs> and the marketing, Lynn. <laughs> Feeling the love. <laughs> yes, I saw that. I liked it too. Okay, and this is what I'm going to say. 
T-shirt quilts do not make a man quilt. They do not, no. T-shirt quilts are for everybody. Unless they got chili stains on them. And it's definitely a man quilt. (laughs) It's not a lady quilt. (laughs) T-shirt quilts are for everybody, and I'm not making them. Amen. (laughs) Because I hate them. No, I hate to make them. I don't hate them as a I genre of quilting. I've seen a lot of good-looking ones. People I just don't want to the t-shirt quilt game. I agree. I just don't want to make it. That's true. I totally, if there are people out there that love to make t-shirt quilts, you go for it. I made a critical error, by the way. Uh, my daughter wrapped up elementary school last year and was, like, cleaning out clothes and t-shirts and had they my kids elementary school they get a different t-shirt for each grade oh okay and the color they get is like their teacher's favorite choice and that's what they wear on field trips or field day and you know just so they're like oh i need to count 27 red red shirts yeah (laughs) that makes sense it's good and so i did a better job of keeping track of my son so i know where all his are from kindergarten through fifth grade and with my daughter it was a little more she was just all about owning the cleaning out of her clothes process herself so like first grades out the door i don't know where it went i have like four of the grades <laughs> of the six you could just... and she was oh, get rid of these i'm like well and i wasn't even thinking i'm like did you want me to make these into a quilt for you yeah i'm like well i can't now because you're missing two and that's gonna drive me bananas i will just get twitchy <laughs> trying to make this into a quilt and i will just like leave a hole like this was first grade but my you daughter on yourself. But my daughter didn't care. <laughs> so now she has guilt. Well, what I did was put them in a cabinet and I will wait till she graduates high school. Oh. And then I will get rid of them. <laughs> and she will not know. Unless she watches this. I love you, honey. <laughs> she doesn't watch. She doesn't watch. <laughs> no. <laughs> my sister doesn't watch either. So we can talk all we want. Hooray. Hooray for us. So I don't think, I just, I think a lot of people think, oh, man quilt, make a t-shirt quilt, which that's cool. If they're into running, make a running quilt for, you know, running t-shirts or whatever. But I don't think that's a man quilt. I think it's a t-shirt quilt yeah, of whatever their t-shirts are. So really it comes down to fabric and color choice. Right. My favorite t-shirt quilt that I just saw was um, all the t-shirts of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, which I would have owned. It was cool. I liked it. It had like second breakfast and it was all good. Anyway, what else were you going to say that I interrupted you? I was so excited about the Hobbit quilt. Huh, I don't know, but there's a note from the production staff you should probably look at. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to totally... sit back for this one. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely Have a nice get... cup of tea. <laughs> definitely getting in trouble. This show is going so well for me. So when we were in Alaska, this is like TMI probably. Oh, your so ears we are red. Were, <laughs> no. Good luck. I'm so in trouble. So I haven't finished the snack quilt that I promised you. I just gave the top two. And when we were in Alaska, we bought all these t-shirts of all these places that we went to Alaska. And I was going to make a t-shirt quilt. I found all those t-shirts the other day. And let's be honest, I, they're not in a quilt form. They're in t-shirt form. And so I just snuck them into the closet so he'd start wearing them. <laughs> I don't think he knows that yet. Which he's sitting right here and finding this out as we speak. <laughs> just FYI. That's where the t-shirts are. That's it's unraveling wrong. right before us. <laughs> Just wrong. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, now I'm crying. Would you rather give a man a quilt or teach him to make his own quilt? That's a good idea. Let Let's us know. just teach them all. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> Feel free to leave a comment. Specifically telling Lynn to pull herself together. (laughs) You could do that on the blog or on the YouTube episode. 
And that's all we have for this episode. Thank goodness. Today's show is made possible by QT Fabrics. <laughs> Learn more about them and their fun fabrics at QTFabrics.com. You better read the next part. Okay. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, I don't know why you would. Please like, share, and subscribe. The next virtual stitch in is just Friday, April 13th. How is it the same day? Because... <laughs> This this comes out on the 13th. Okay. It's tonight. If you're watching it right when it comes out, it's They'll tonight. They'll love talking to us tonight about this one. Anyway. 7 p.m. Right. U.S. Eastern. Broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Exactly. And my podcast with none of this nonsense. Hip to be a square is out on Fridays on iTunes or Google Play. And all those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat, laugh, craziness, words with friends.